Well, hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. Again, we're in the book of Acts, and today we're going to start a new chapter, but it's a continuation of the story that we just had in chapter 10. So in chapter 11, it's interesting because it starts off telling us that the, soon the news reached the apostles and other believers in Judea that the Gentiles had received the word of God. So it's interesting, first of all, that the news got there before they got there. Yeah, because we're going to see soon that Peter hadn't gotten there yet. Yeah, so, so Peter hadn't gotten there Not much has changed through all the years, because, you know, don't you know that this was oh, scared yes, about around was the church? Oh, yeah, there was a lot you, to talk have about. You heard have, what you that, heard? have you heard oh, what that boy. Peter did this time? I've heard about this. Okay. So verse 2, but when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. So at that point, Peter's going to repeat what we already know because he's. we had the story earlier back in chapter 10. So I'm going to jump down to verse 15, and this is after he's concluded explaining all this to them. And he says, As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Well, see, that's what we talked about yesterday. yesterday Actually, yes. I think we've referred to this several times. I think Peter's theology was sound. It was just that he had a hard time putting it all together. And you can see him here saying, oh, that's right. I mm. do remember Jesus yeah, I remember talking. remember what right, Jesus said. Right. Okay, so verse 17. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is I to stand in God's way? I have that underlined. Too. Yeah, I do too. Don't want to stand yeah, in God's way. Okay, verse 18. When the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising God. They said, we can see that God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving eternal life. So, boy, there's a lot here and being in so many years of ministry, we can see some parallels. Yeah. You know, um, when things don't go as we expected, sometimes we just automatically object and criticize, and that's what yeah. these people did. They thought they understood the pattern, and this upset it. Yeah. Well, and, and again, they, they just have, have not yet fully embraced in their hearts and, and in a practical sense, the idea that the church is going to be different. It's going to be mm -hmm. different from the old covenant. They're, they're accustomed to all these promises and commitments that God has made to the Jewish people. I think in theory, they have the idea that it could go through the whole world, but in their minds, I think they think largely it's still going to go through the Jewish nation just as it did in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we do know, Mary Austin, this is important that we talk about too, because we live in an age where the pendulum has swung too far, where there are those who say, oh, well, God no longer has any relationship with the people of Israel. We know that God's still going to keep his promises to the nation of Israel. The book of Romans is very clear on that. So God is still in a covenant relationship with his people. But the church is something different. You yes. know, God is working through all peoples. Uh, to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. And certainly that's what we see happening here. And, and to your point that you made earlier, uh, you know, you see uh, uh, some of what we still see today in these believers and probably the Bible indicates apostles. So when mm -hmm. Peter got back and was criticized, it's very likely he was being criticized from some of the other 12. But what I do love about them is when they were wrong, they admitted it, they got yes. it. And, and I love when the Bible says, uh, when they heard this, in other words, when they heard Peter's testimony of what had happened in Cornelius' household, they stopped objecting. Oh, how powerful is that? Yes. When God is very clear on something, it's time to stop objecting. Yes. You know, it, it's no longer up for discussion. It's no longer, uh, it, it's no longer something to debate. But they stopped objecting. And then notice this. They began praising God. Yes. Until they stopped objecting, they weren't really praising God. That's true. And of course, this just reminds me of what we've seen God do at New Spring because uh, back in the transition, I know we talked about this a long time, and this has been 20 years ago now, but when this happened, but the people that left had a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. and, and what the main criticism was is that the people that we were given the gospel to, that we were invited in the doors, were not the people that they wanted to be associated with yeah. in any way. Yeah. And uh, in, in, in um, looking at the end of this, now that so many years have passed, a lot of those people have now seen sure. what, that God was at work. And in fact, in, in a lot of cases, some of those people's children and grandchildren have been reached with the gospel or, and, and with godly influence through New Spring. And so sometimes it takes time to watch 
you, you always say if you give it enough time, people yeah. that have the right heart will see the truth sure. and see what God is doing. But I think that our human nature is so, so quick to criticize. Well, I'll tell you what's a challenge to sort out, and, and I think you even see this some with the apostles here. What's a challenge to sort out is what we've learned from the Word of God and what we've learned from people. Mm. Because it kind of gets all balled up together. It kind of gets all messed up together. Um, and it's it's not easy sometimes to sort out the, dis the difference between what we believe because the Word of God says it and what we believe because it's something that we've been taught in our culture. And that doesn't mean that we can't be taught good things in our culture because there are things that, that are wise and beneficial that might not be specifically in the Word of God, but they're still wise and beneficial. Mm -hmm. But there are times, I think, when in our culture we picked up things um, that people teach but not God. And mm -hmm. it takes a while sometimes to get all that shaken out of our hair. Yes. But I, as you pointed out, I'm so glad that once they really heard it, and, and we've seen that over the years mm -hmm. too, once they really see what God is doing, then that is the time to stop objecting and to start celebrating. One more thing, and I'd love to get your take on this, because I'm, I'm probably going to go out a little bit over the edge on this, but I think that um, when Peter gave it a human face, in other words, when mm -hmm. he introduced them to Cornelius, I'm sure he told him about Cornelius, told him about his wife, told him about his kids, you know, told him about the people who worked for him. All of a sudden, it wasn't a theory anymore. It wasn't like, well, can Romans actually be part of the church? I think it was like, oh, so now we kind of know Cornelius' story. Mm -hmm. Don't you think there's an element to that? There's something about meeting and knowing somebody that breaks down a wall, breaks down a prejudice. Absolutely. We've seen that in our lifetime too, just growing up when it comes to race. A lot of times people have prejudices because they don't know anybody that's from that culture. Yeah. And when they meet somebody from that culture, then that changes the whole paradigm. Because those sometimes those prejudices just get invested in somebody before they realize mm -hmm. even that they're believing something that's wrong. Uh, I, I just, I love this story and I kind of hate for it to come to an end now, but the story of Cornelius to me is, is such a transitional moment in the early church. Yes, and as we go through, keep going, we're going to see more, and it's going to spread out more, so there's more stories to come, sure. so don't go away. <laughs> Get your Bible out and read it with us. Pray for us, Mary Alice. Yes, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for preserving these accounts for us so that we can look back and, and see how marvelously you worked in those days and then see the same God working so marvelously even today. Thank you for allowing us to be part of that and to see you at work. Thank you for blessing our children and our grandchildren as we see you work in their lives. And I just pray that you be with all of our Noah's window family, that you bless them today, got them through this day, draw them close into your presence and ramp them in your love. We're going to be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise for everything you do in our lives today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today on Noah's Window. One more time, uh, book by book. Tomorrow, tomorrow night, night at 6.30. 6.30. Yes. And we'll look forward to seeing you then. Yes, we love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Mm -hmm.